Okay, so what we have here is a Road Pro ceramic heater and fan, uh, also known as a cab heater in the trucking industry, but it's also used a lot by farmers and uh, uh, RV in the RV world. I'm going to be hooking this up to a solar powered off grid uh, camper trailer. I'm also testing this for use in some of the smaller solar powered systems, but also realize that at 300 watts of DC, 12 volt DC usage, you're probably talking about maybe 350 to 400 watts worth of solar panel charging capacity to be able to produce power at the rate this thing's going to be using power at full, full speed. So it's one of those things where if you have even a pretty large battery bank, it can draw your battery bank down faster than a, a small to medium powered solar array can charge it up. On the other hand, as long as you have the, a fully charged set of batteries in this thing, uh, in, in your system, and this thing is running on fully charged batteries, you would be able to run this for a short period of time, let's say while you get up and get dressed, and, and get out for the day, but if you're going to be in a continuously uh, in the space that's heated by this heater continuously, you're going to need to look for a relatively powerful 12 volt power generation source in order to keep this thing going without draining your batteries down. My personal use for this thing is to get that, that good little burst of heat in the uh, off-grid survival uh, locations where we want to get some heat right away. Let's say we've come in from uh, a day of work and the fireplace went out and, and, and I want to get warm before it gets going. The other thing is that the way ceramic heaters work in general, especially in offices and cubicles and, and vehicles where uh, you, you, you have heaters which usually are not at the floor level. So something like this would, let's say, go under a desk and warm your feet and will help uh, warm an area that's not reached by other heaters. For uh, farmers and truckers, a lot of times that's, that's the footwell area of a cab, uh, especially when you've gotten into a large diesel vehicle and it hasn't warmed up yet. You want to get some heat right away. The onboard batteries, especially if the vehicle's running, even if it doesn't uh, charge your batteries at quite the same rate, you're, you're going to be okay. If you have a normal automotive alternator, realize a lot of those are just 30 amp alternators, and this thing's using um, uh, probably about 20 amps to, to keep it going. Now, in the instructions, it says you need to hook it up on a 30 amp fused circuit. For me, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be hooking this directly to the battery of my off grid setup. Although, if it's going to become more permanent, I probably would put it into a fused circuit, but for the demonstration purposes, I'm going to go direct hookup. One of the things I noticed on this is it does have its own fuses built on. It has some little warning light if it gets hot. It shuts itself down, so you're probably not looking at all day, every day type heat, but it's good enough to get up, get dressed in the morning, get warm right away especially in RVs where you, you tend to you know, just run the stove to warm the place up, but that doesn't do much to warm the floor and the foot areas and the areas under the table, so that's, that's where I'm really looking to use this thing. You've got relatively normal controls for the fan speed, which can also run independently of the heating element, so if you just want it to circulate area, you can do that. Um, we've got a heating element which will go a couple different ways and it kind of looked to me I thought there was a high setting and a low setting on this it kind of looks to me like it's either got on or off and then if we put it on the fan only setting that's that's fan only setting that's only going to circulate some stuff uh, in the literature it was looking like there was uh, a high low setting so it kind of looks to me like it's on or off here so uh, what people were talking about was that these things had, at least maybe the older model, had a high and a low setting on that. But if you run this fan only, it's, it's not really going to run your heat. You've got a kind of a pivoting mounting bracket, but, you know, realistically, maybe you could just set this on a, on a floor or something like that. Uh, a couple different ways to mount this mounting bracket with some double-endy uh, sticky stuff, and then we've got some screws. So 
once that mounting bracket goes in you just simply uh, click that into place but it's a little tricky to click into place we have to work with uh, popping these off put it into the spot pop them back on type of thing not the best mounting system in the world but it'll it'll serve its purpose the other thing that might serve a better purpose is to put a quick detach type plug on this similar to uh, what would be set up let's say on power hunt appliances but even the power hunt plugs are pretty expensive and power hunt does make a 12 volt heater that is much more it's it's about double the price of this and it's more expensive so here we are installed I'm not going to bore you with all the details on what it took to install it uh, two wire hookup I've got about 10 feet of wire to uh, work with reposition is where I want I've got a nice little gripping area it's you know it's basically a plastic cube relatively durable as far as you know being in a, a vehicle or tractor or truck cab interior here in a camper that's not really much of a problem one of the things I need to look out for though is if this falls down like this it doesn't automatically turn off you see that it's still running full heat when it's facing downward these things a lot of times have a, a little tilt safety mechanism on something plus this little grate uh, this doesn't have that so it's possible if it tilts over on let's say something plastic or flammable you can have a problem the thing I like about maybe not hard mounting it is I, I can move it around I, I can move it to warm a little area here uh, I can move it down by my feet and legs that sort of a thing would I be gambling to run more than one of these in the camper yeah I probably gambling when you're doing that but one of these I could run for a little while I think I'm, I'm gonna be just fine uh, the switch settings really simple uh, that's the heat setting now once I turn it off the ceramic is heated up so there's still some heat circulating off of this and then of course we can run the fan and we can still scavenge some of that heat without the heater element itself going uh, yeah, and what will happen is it will eventually cool off but let's say you know it's getting late you're afraid of using some of the power you, you can still get some of that residual heat just by running the fan uh, the thing I notice is uh, this speed setting on this doesn't make a huge difference I mean they might as well just leave it all the way on and call it on uh, we, we've got this indicator light when it's got power and that seems to not change when everything's turned off and that's because these things are made to be wired into a circuit let's say that's tied into a vehicle's ignition system so that when the uh, the vehicle's running, the heater gets power. If the vehicle's not running, the heater doesn't get power. That's to protect you from drawing the battery down. There is no other switching or anything on the cord, but remember, we're looking at a heater that tends to sell for under $50. It sells for more than, let's say, the $10 to $15 Harbor Freight heater. It has about four times the heating area. Everything I can tell is it also has about four times the heating output. If you need more output than this, and you're running a 12-volt system, you're going to have to start using some propane. Uh, right now, it's uh, 61 degrees outside. I've got 70 degrees inside with a door wide open. It's dark out. We're not producing any more solar power right now. I'm strictly running off the batteries. I'm kind of doing a little bit of a drawdown test right now. I've got most of the lights in here turned on. And check livability. I, I'm, I, I can... Probably I would be able to run things for a couple hours now if it starts to get really cold though got to run the uh, propane The other thing is I've heard some stories about longevity on these that maybe they can overheat or the fuse go if you just run it continuously uh, They're not very expensive if you switch and fuse this Realize that you're you're creating a situation very similar to what power hunt does with a more expensive plug system and power hunt does have their own heater uh, this thing's apparently switched. It has some uh, uh, some electronics inside. It's not just barrel bones electrical connectors. I believe it's it has a circuit breaker built into it. And these things are expensive. They're like you know fifty sixty dollars. Uh, but here we can turn that whole switch on and off, and it's large heavy duty stuff. When it's off, we know that anything plugged into that, anything used with that, isn't going to be using any power. Uh, you would probably have to build your own switch to use this. Uh, or if you really need to upgrade to a more powerful heater, switch over to the power hunt unit. Uh, what I can say is that if I'm just hanging out for the evening and then I'm getting ready to go to bed, 
And this thing's going to be fine without really costing me any money because I've got I've got solar power for free. Uh, looking at my battery drawdown right here, um, I guess that's kind of hard to see, but basically I've got 13.1 volts right now. Uh, when I turn this thing on, uh, it drops to uh, 12.8, but it doesn't even drop right away. Now that's that's mainly a function of the fact that I've got four pretty large deep cycle batteries on this system and they were fully charged when I came here tonight to do this test. Uh, I think this is a good item. It, it is what it is. They're under 50 bucks available on Amazon. I'll try to put a link in here.